Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's February 5th, 2014, and let's get straight into our top story tonight. The United States Postal Service has bought bullets. This is to add to the hefty amount by DHS, which they say is just for target practice. It's not to be used against you, the American citizen. So DHS has the bullets. The United States Postal Service has the bullets. But they say they're just going to use them to shoot the paper targets of women, pregnant women, children, old men, and so forth and so on. So be sure of that. And the next time they say that all this bullet rationing all these bullets that they're buying is just another conspiracy theory moving on supreme court justice confirms american internment camps will happen again it is reality this is from justice scalia he said you are kidding yourself if you think the same thing will not happen again that's what's going on the panic about the war and the invasion of the pacific and whatnot that's what happens it was wrong but it would not but i would not be surprised to see it happen again in time of war it's not justification, but it is the reality. Of course, talking about the Japanese internment camps, and not just the internment camps, but we've seen similar things with the resettlement of Native Americans and other groups as well. So at least he's being real about it. He's saying, you know, we have these big FEMA camps, these big FEMA drills. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see these type of things happen again. Sheila Jackson Lee, writing executive orders for Obama to sign our number one agenda. Democratic Representative Sheila Jackson Lee said that the new Congressional Full Employment Caucus will give President Obama a number of executive orders that he can sign. Jackson Lee added that writing up executive orders should be our number one agenda. And if you recall last year, part of Ms. Jackson Lee's agenda was to have martial law to overcome the government shutdown. You know, just use martial law to do whatever you want to do. Not only that, we've seen President Obama saying that he will bypass Congress with executive orders, executive actions for anything that he feels that he should just be able to do, whether that's taking over your guns or launching on constitutional wars, kinetic actions, as he likes to call them. And this just fits right into that same mode. TSA blasted for dishonest response to whistleblowers expose. Now, we all know that the TSA is the organization of the highest caliber. And this is the article from Paul Joseph Watson. Jason Harrington wrote a piece for Politico magazine in which he lifted the lid on the endemic corruption that pervades the TSA, revealing how TSA screeners laughed at naked images of passengers, deliberately targeted attractive women, operated dangerous full body scanners while being fully aware of the fact that they didn't work. The TSA's assistant administrator, Luann Canopy, responded on the agency's official blog website by claiming Harrington's article was a mischaracterization of TSA procedure. So the TSA went into damage control saying that this doesn't represent our agency accurately. Well, what about this? What about uh, filling up Alec Baldwin's little baby girl or all the kids that you touch when they travel through because they may be a potential terrorist? Checking out grandma's diaper, you know, grandpa who's a wounded veteran making him stand up out of his wheelchair. Recently, when we went to the Super Bowl, TSA in the train stations, you said, oh, well, I thought TSA was just going to stay in the airports. No, it's transportation, any type of transportation, whether that's a train, whether that's a car, whether that's an airplane. They're at the Super Bowl on the train right before you get to the Super Bowl, checking people's luggage there. So the TSA, uh, not to mention the ABC report, where the, uh, the TSA agent stole the iPad from ABC News. ABC News that shows up, they say, hey, we want an iPad back. He said, oh, I'm sorry, my wife stole it. Just complete lunacy. Uh, stupidity going on at that agency it really needs to be shut down because last time i counted they have not caught a single terrorist in their entire existence head of iran nuclear organization entire nuclear activity of iran is going on the head of iran's nuclear organization ali akbar says the entire nuclear activity of iran is going on despite some nuclear deal reached with the united states and other western nations akbar made the comments in an interview with press tv the United States says that it has managed to dismantle at least parts of Iran's nuclear program. What do you say to that was the question posed by Press TV, to which the response was given. Well, you can come and see whether or not our sites, nuclear equipment, and nuclear facilities are dismantled or not. We see the United States trying to tell Iran how to operate their nuclear program, and I'm definitely not here cheerleading for Iran, but I see the United States government a country who dropped a ball in Fukushima, the Fukushima cleanup, because, you know, they sent the guys from the USS Ronald Reagan to go clean up the Fukushima disaster. The guys come back, they're sick, and the government's like, well, we don't know why these guys got sick. Same thing happened on the West Coast when um, myself and some of the other crew members 
went to the West Coast to document radiation levels. We found radiation levels in excess of 10 times of what's considered normal in Half Moon Bay, California. Nobody wants to talk about this, and we've seen debris come in from Fukushima. Well, not necessarily Fukushima, but from the tsunami. And if we can get tsunami debris, why can't we get Fukushima debris? It's just baffling to me. So whether you like nuclear power, nuclear weapons, whatever you think about fallout or cleanup, I think the United States definitely is not the best of telling people how to operate their nuclear facilities. Mainstream media collapsing. New York Times now irrelevant, according to its own writers. The New York Observer interviewed more than two dozen current and former New York Times writers, virtually all of whom were unanimous in acknowledging that the old grade lady had become increasingly insignificant. And with the growing strength of the alternative media, with the growing strength of citizen journalists, you better start swimming or you will sink like a stone because you got guys like Dan Badandi who can go to the press conference for the Boston bombing. Why were people being told to remain calm right before the bomb went off? You got guys like the guy who went to the, uh, to the Super Bowl. The citizen journalist jumped up on stage and said, investigate 9-11. And, you know, that may not be the best course of action for every event, but it worked for him. And he got the message out there. And, you know, thankfully, people are bold enough to still say investigate 9-11 because not everybody believes the official story that they're trying to pull. And speaking of citizen journalists, we have this one. UK cop caught framing citizen journalist on camera. No Away. No Away. With that. You're part of that group. You're assaulting me, please. I'm not assaulting you. I'm moving you and I'm helping you into that line. Are you drunk? Have you been drinking this morning? Have you been drinking this morning? No, I've not. You've been drinking this morning? No, I've not. You've been drinking? I've had tea. You've arrived in your car? No, I've not. You've arrived in your car this morning? You've had a drink, haven't you? I am not this is driving. Fail you will be arrested. Do you consent to provide a specimen? I do not consent to provide a specimen. You're under arrest for failing to provide a specimen of breath. Another disgusting example of police overreach, just the complete police state. We saw this when the crew went up to Dallas and they were busting people's heads, shoving people over, not allowing people, uh, peaceful protesters, to enter a space that they were told they would be able to go into. Uh, you know, every time I go out to the Texas Capitol building now, it seems like the Texas DPS is always out there arresting people for doing nothing more than exercising their constitutional rights. Guys out there carrying their long guns, uh, people peacefully protesting, even uh, the abortionist who went out there, and I'm definitely not a supporter of abortion, but I'm not a supporter of Texas DPS trying to frame people up, saying that they're throwing feces and all this. And then the court, uh, the case goes to court, comes out that that was not exactly true because they had no evidence to support it. So, you know, I'll call it like I see it. I don't like abortion, but I don't like you guys lying on them either. All you cricket cops out there, uh, we had the guy on the Alex Jones radio show today talking about some local issues here in Austin, the story about Larry Jackson, also a story about a young man a high school student who was tased by police, who was doing nothing wrong. The young man had actually broken up a fight. I was standing there, minding his own business. The cop comes up behind and tases the guy. The kid falls down, busts his head open. Now the kid, uh, well, he was in a cobra coma for a long time. He's up and active now, but he still has many, uh, many difficulties that are going to be facing him as his life continues. So speak out against this police state. If you are an officer, be one of the good officers. Be a shining example of, the, of people who can look at you and say, you know, this guy isn't like all the rest. You know, we were recently in New York for the, uh, for the Super Bowl. And for as many issues as I have with the NYPD, I'm not a fan of the stop and frisk. I'm not a fan of all the security cameras. I'm not a fan of them opening fire on one guy at the Empire State Building and hitting nine other people. I don't like any of that, but I give credit where credit is due. When I went to New York this past week and I had no issues with the NYPD. You know, I'm not saying that nobody else did, but me personally, I didn't. So, you know, I give credit where credit's due and hopefully we can get more uh, more people to act like that 365 days a year, not just be nice because you have this big crowd in town, but be good people all year round. Mandatory vehicle to vehicle communications coming to United States cars. Let's see what this is. The geniuses at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration are so concerned about your safety that they have decided to take into their own hands and make it mandatory that your car wirelessly communicate with other vehicles on the road. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox went so far as to say the technology could save thousands of lives and even prevent accidents in the first place, which basically means they want to uh, have an unstarred type system where they can remotely shut down your car if they feel like it, or they can be like the people who want to tax you by the mile, just like a, a taxi cab does because of carbon credits. So you didn't hear about that. You can find those reports on Infowars.com. And we'll end tonight with this. Obama's next executive action, create climate hubs. Okay, so they want to 
regulate your land, tell you what you can and cannot do on your land, if you can have a pool, if you can have ducks and chickens and cows and what forth. This is what they want to do. This is the next thing, the next executive action. Based at existing agricultural department facilities, the hubs will assess local climate risk, such as droughts and wildfires, then develop plans for dealing with them, such as improved irrigation techniques. So which means Big Brother is coming to your land and he's going to tell you exactly what you can and cannot do to it. So stay tuned after this break. This is the end of our first segment, but right after this break, Alex's son, Rex Jones, will be giving you a special report, and you don't want to miss that. And also, I'll be talking to Michael Cargill of Central Texas Gunworks. He is the first retailer gun seller in the country to accept bitcoins for firearms purchases, both new and used firearms, so you don't want to miss that. Stay tuned for both of those right after this break. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Throughout history, authoritarian regimes have wanted to control the youth and condition them, to spy on their parents and to join the Hitler Youth. Publications like Forbes and The Week have asked the question, why is there a war on lemonade stands? We're going to answer that important question. An 11-year-old girl's lucrative cupcake business is in limbo. She was prohibited from selling cupcakes that were made in her home and had not made anyone sick. A 4-year-old Iowa girl had her lemonade stand shut down by local police. Her crime? She had been selling lemonade at 25 cents a cup for less than half an hour and probably didn't make much more than $5. Police informed her that a permit would cost $400. In protest to this kooky and insane attack on an American tradition, August 20th is now unofficially National Lemonade Freedom Day. In Virginia, Martha Bonita was threatened with $5,000 per day fines for such horrific crimes as hosting a birthday party for eight 10-year-olds on a rural property without a permit and for advertising pumpkin carvings. In response, Delegate Bob Marshall introduced HB 1219 into the Virginia General Assembly. It states, local officials who abuse zoning authority powers to cower citizens into submission and deprive landowners of constitutional rights in the enjoyment of their land must be subject to fines and actual damages that they cause, including attorney fees. Colorado students and their parents are furious at their high school after administrators rejected their request for a Spirit Week Day honoring America because it might offend non-Americans. 